Hello Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing, once again, V1, V2 code here, and we're going to be talking about try, catch, throw. Sounds like something my dad would say to me as a kid, but today it has to do with code instead of baseball. And that is a lame dad joke for me. Uh, so here we're going to be using, this is the V1 code first that we're going to show, then we'll jump into the V2, explain the differences a little bit. So we're doing F1. This is basically really good for kind of like error handling and whatnot. That's kind of the approach we're taking here in this video. So we're doing F1 as our hotkey, obviously. You know, change it to what you want. And we're going to start with the try. And what that's doing is, I mean, pretty self-explanatory with that word. It attempts to execute code. Well, what code are we doing? So inside here, we're doing hello world function and make toast function. So yeah, so first it's going to execute the hello world code uh, function, which is down here, which is very simple. It's just message box, hello world. Now this is always going to work because, I mean, it's just a message box. There's, as far as I know, there should be nothing that should ever go wrong with this. Um, if it does, I blame you. It's user error, um, which is half the mistakes I make. So everything is going to go smooth. We'll get that message box. We'll click OK. We're going to then jump to the next function, which is make toast. That's going to jump down here. Uh, so this function. So it jumps immediately to the tries block air handler. And that's where the throw comes into place. So it's going to throw. And so you'd put this wherever you want your air handling to kind of be. Um, you could use if statements here. You know, if variable is blank, you know, throw whatever you want to call the air so in these uh parentheses here is where you're going to be putting you know whatever you want your air or message to say so is not implemented sorry and a this function make toast all that and then we have some more down here but we'll get back to that so up here it's going to try obviously something's going to go wrong so it's going to catch and that's e that's basically your air um so your variable for that and we're going to just, once again, keep it simple. Message box. An exception was thrown specifically. So I'm doing a line break. That's what here is. That's a tilde with an N. That just means line break. Just make it look cleaner. Specifically. And then whatever that air was that we did down here. So this is going to be stored as that E variable here. Obviously, put it into the percent signs because it is a variable. We don't want it to actually display the letter E. We want whatever the message is that's being stored. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let me launch that real quick, make sure I have no other scripts running. I've done that plenty of times in my videos and wondered why something wasn't working. It's because I had a script interfering. So that's always a good thing to do. Oop, where did that go? All right, so we're going to press F1. Okay, there we are. Hello world, jump down here, message box. We're all good. But now we're going to jump down here. We're going to throw that air on purpose. And there we go. So went down here, threw that, catched it. Now it's going to display whatever was stored into the E variable in here. So we got an exception, an, ex an exception was thrown specifically, and that's what's up here. But now it's going to get what was down here. Is not implemented. Sorry, or whatever you type. It's pretty straightforward. It's great sometimes to put these in different parts of your script. You know, if variable is blank, do this instead of what you normally would do. Maybe a message box saying, yo, you got to actually enter data for this to work. You know, please do it again. And you don't always have to do it. You know, that's just one way. You can always just use straight up plain message boxes and have them re-loop back up to, you know, the handler to start over or something. There's a few different ways to do it. This is a very basic intro. Next, we're basically doing the same thing down here, but we're going to see hotkeys. If you don't know... I've done it in plenty of videos. You can turn off hotkeys, turn them back on, that kind of thing. So here we're using F2. We're checking for F5 hotkey. Now, as you see, obviously, I'm just using F1 and F2. F2 does not exist. Or, sorry, F5 does not exist in my script. So we need to throw an error there because it doesn't exist. Because it's... You know, maybe it has to be turned on manually through uh, a drop-down menu or something. So we're going to do catch target error. Because it was target error from the try, obviously this doesn't exist. Message box, whatever you want. 
you can use a GUI, whatever. Hotkey does not exist, or it has no variant for the current if criteria. Which, the if is basically like a try. <clears throat> so pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's, uh, do I still have that running, or did I close it? Yep, it's still running. So we're going to press F2. This hotkey does not exist. So, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, now, let's take a look at the version 2 code. Version 2 code, for the most part, pretty much the same as you see here. few differences, basically, is everything is a function now. So our F1, we just need to make sure from the beginning to the end that we are putting in our uh, curly brackets here at the beginning and end. Same uh, down here, which we already did. But uh, with our F2, we also want to make sure we're doing that also. Uh, but as far as I can see, that's pretty much the biggest difference besides the uh, message boxes. Um, yeah, so like here we have like, hello world. But here we do have it in quotations. Um, so, you know, just a few little changes that you can make to just, you know, kind of match that syntax style of version 2. Uh, throw air, uh, that is a little bit different. Uh, we're doing, as you see here, but over here we are putting um, throw air, and we're putting it into the uh, parentheses here with the a this function inside of the parentheses. So you can see, like, here we didn't write the word air. And there's no parentheses, so that's really the biggest differences there. So that is the version 2 code. I'm not going to show you this because it works exactly the same with those few small changes. If you guys like this video, always hit that like button. It lets me know which videos you like, don't like. That way, if I want to expand on something or do something similar, definitely let me know. Obviously, please hit the subscribe button, as I'm always throwing usually two, sometimes even three videos out every single week and just in case you guys don't know every friday joe Ezekiel, i a few other pretty well-known people in auto hockey's qap guy uh the person who created the v1 to v2 creator and a bunch of other random people we always have them coming on with us too and we're basically it's free we live stream it you can join the zoom call you can join through joe's channel my channel whatever where it's being streamed and we just help you you can ask a simple question. You can ask a complex question. We're there to hit help you. If we don't have time to maybe get to your answer that week, maybe we'll cover it on the following week. Maybe we'll do a video on it if it's a, you know something that could be a great video for everybody. Or at least we can at least, in the meantime, direct you in the right way, saying, hey, maybe take a look at this. We'll try to cover it later on. So, yeah, I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you.